Our hero king, Inglise is on the deathbed after a lifetime of serving the nation. However, before he dies, the divine maiden Alistair offers him a visit to fulfill one of his dying wishes. After close consideration, Inglis claims that he wants to be reborn so that he can test out his martial arts skills, even though he doesn't regret his current life choices. As Inglis closes his eyes Alistair bids him farewell with a promise that she will meet him again. Inglis opens his eyes and realizes that his wish has been granted, but all of a sudden regret it as he is born as a girl. An old man in disguise of a girl, what an awful sight lol. However, Inglise realizes that she still has the goddess's grace, but a sudden commotion startles her as she realizes that her world is filled with magicite beasts, a worthy foe for our little Inglise. Although this information makes Inglise happy, one of the beasts attacks her home, while her mother and her cousin Raphael Bilford fight it. However, the beast turns out to be more powerful causing them various injuries, but Inglise uses her divine power to save them all. As time goes by, Inglise Aka Chris turns five, and one day she meets up with her cousin Raffinha Bilford to train with other knights but their leisure time gets ruined when a merchant company leader asks Chris's dad to train his son, Rawl. Even though Rawl appears timid, as soon as he spars with different knights, he gives them a good beating making Chris suspicious about his sword ship skills. After close inspection, Chris realizes that Rawl is using mana to control his opponent's moments, while Raphael decides to spar with Rawl. Chris tries to warn Raphael but he also ends up losing the match. This makes Raffinha sad so Chris decides to test her skills as she challenges Rawl for a match which he refuses at first but Chris insists claiming that she knows his tricks. As the match begins, Chris uses her mana to dispel Rawl's mana but instead of using her mana as an advantage, Chris wins the match purely based on her skills of swordsmanship. As soon as Chris wins the match, everyone appreciates her for her skill while Raw leaves with his father with extreme rage boiling inside him. After a while, Raffina and Chris undergo a ritual that gives them runes that determine what kind of power they can yield for special to low grade runes. As soon as the box shines, Raffina showcases her high grade rune making everyone happy. However, as soon as it's Chris's turn, she understands the mechanics of the box and uses her blessings to repel the box mana flow causing her to remain runeless. This information makes Chris's father sulk while Chris sweet talks everyone by suggesting that she will become Raffinus Squire. As Chris ages, she learns about the different phenomena of her new world, one of them being Prism Flow, a type of rain that turns fauna and flora into magicite beasts while she also learns about the Highlanders, an advanced species that provides humans with artifacts that help them fight the Magicite beast while in turn, the humans give them crops and other materials. One day while preparing for a banquet, Raffina informs Chris that a Highlander ambassador will be visiting their party. At the party, Raffina's father introduces Leon Alpha, a holy knight who works under Raphael. As they all chatter, Rawl's intrusion as the Highlander ambassador startles them. The arrogant Rawl informs Chris and the others that with money and some connection, he was able to become a Highlander. Rawl tries to intimidate Chris but Leon intervenes and informs Chris and Raffinha about Hyrule Menace, humans that are the ultimate artifact as they can turn into deadly weapons to protect their people. As Leon takes the duo to meet up with Eris, he degrades his people, while suggesting humans cannot talk against Highlanders but Raffinha intervenes, as she refutes Leon's statement. After that, when Leon introduces them to Eris, she suddenly slaps Leon before walking away. All of a sudden, a commotion attracts their attention, as Rawl kills a noble who tried to protect a knight from Rawl's inappropriate temptations. Rawl also threatens Raff and his father by suggesting that his words are absolute in the face of any human, and a word from him can cause extreme harm to their lingering balance of power. Meanwhile, Chris intervenes as she understands that Rawl is trying to intimidate everyone by showing off his superiority and suggesting that she will become his partner for the night. Not understanding his position, Rawl walks away with pride as he thinks he will have a chance to control Chris. Later in the night, while Chris approaches Rawl's mansion, Eris stops her thinking that Chris is doing this out of her sense of responsibility. But little does she know that Chris only wants to fight strong opponents. Eris attacks Chris with hopes that she will back down but Chris shows her extraordinary skills by showcasing her command of manipulating mana. However, their conversation is cut short when Leon attacks Eris with his lightning ability. Eris quickly recovers from Leon's attack and asks Leon about the reason for his betrayal. However, Leon informs the duo that he isn't betraying them for Highlander, but instead, 
he has decided to join the Blood Chain Brigade, an anti-Highlander organization that wants to destroy the Highlanders' hometown and also wants humans to live in peace. This agitates Eris as she claims that Blood Chain Brigade's action has only caused misery for the humans as they cannot fight against Highlanders, as they provide humans with artifacts. However, Leon informs Chris and Eris that with the help of a Hyrule menace, they can create their artifact and uses his ability to attack Chris so that he can take away Eris. But Chris condenses her mana and defeats all the lightning tigers that come her way, while she also protects Eris from Leon. Leon tries to launch another attack but Chris manages to stop him on time. But before she can subdue Leon, a huge magician beast appears out of nowhere, followed by Raffina who was in Rawl's mansion. The magicite beast almost attacks Raffina but Chris saves her in time while Leon explains that it is Rawl who turned into such a beast. Leon further explains that he used prism powder, a type of drug that turns Highlanders into hideous creatures and runs away before the knights can counter him. Meanwhile, help arrives in the form of knights and Raffina's father but Chris decides to tackle the monster away from the town. So, with the help of Eris, Chris kicks the monster away from the town where Chris uses her final move to take down the monster. Even though Chris defeats the monster, she asks Eris to keep this a secret as she doesn't want people to find out that she has such power. Before Eris can leave, Chris tries to question her about the night they met but Eris decides to stay silent about it and leave. After two years, Chris and Raffina start their journey toward the Night Academy, and along the way, they visit a town where a Highlander is their mayor. As Chris and Raffina are gluttons, they quickly run out of money so they visit the Highlander's mansion in search of a job where they easily clear the test. While they enjoy their bath, Chris and Raffina meet up with Lady Salen, the Highlander that is ruling the town. Salen's kind-hearted nature is observed by the duo as they watch that Salen is taking care of children who are orphans. However, as Chris realizes that some kind of entity is draining their mana from their feet, she decides to ask Salen about it with hopes she might get to fight someone powerful but Salen refuses to have any knowledge about it. Although the duo claims that they will be leaving soon, Salen asks for their help regarding a faction that is disturbing the town ever since Salen was appointed as mayor. As they visit the deserter's hideout, Chris realizes that among them is Hyrule Menace which makes her happy. As everyone engages in a fight, Chris requests Raffina to handle everyone else while she decides to take on Hyrule Menace, Sister Rouge herself, who degrades Chris for her lack of skills. However, Chris shows off her mana which startles Seen as well and engages in a fierce battle with Sistia. During the battle, Sistia tries to maintain her distance from Chris but she easily subdues her. Such fearsome power makes Sistia angry as she tries to persuade Chris to join her side but Chris claims that she is only looking forward to fighting off powerful people as she has no intention to be the hero that everyone wants. However, as soon as Sistia realizes that she cannot escape, she uses her power to hold Raffina hostage which infuriates Chris but she remains calm as she asks Sistia to leave. The next day, Salen appreciates Chris and Raffina for their bravery while she also informs them that she will not kill the traitors as they are loyal knights, while Salen also compliments the tea that her servant Mimosa made. After that, Salen takes the duo to an underground dungeon where a powerful spell is absorbing mana, and comes clean that the Highlanders are trying to steal this part of the land. However, Salen claims that she doesn't want to be a part of it and that she will do everything in her power to protect the people of this town. Raffina decides to take Salen's side as she believes her words, but Chris only thinks about fighting Highlander, pretty face with a muscle brain. That night, all of a sudden, Salen's body turns into a magicite beast and Chris realizes that it was Mimosa who drugged her with Prism Flow. However, as Raffina and Chris try to protect the town from Salen's sudden attacks, Sistia injures Salen's arm, but Chris stops her from killing Salen. Chris realizes that Sistia is a part of the Blood Chain Brigade, and she also encounters their leader, the Masked Man. As Sistia tries to stab Salen, Chris manages to stop her but the Masked Man interrupts their fight. Salen is called out by the orphans causing Salen to regain some of her sense as she tries to kill herself but Chris yet again stops her. The Masked Man makes a deal with Chris that they will leave the town as soon as Chris defeats the beast somehow. Chris uses all of her mana to make an ice shell while the Masked Man also helps Chris by shrinking Salen's huge body. The Masked Man's magic control makes Chris ponder if he is also a divine knight even though she cannot sense the goddess in this realm. After the fight, Chris and Raffina leave the town, with Salen who turns into a cute mini-beast causing Raffina to call her Lin. Along the way to the academy, Chris and Raffina visit a town called Almond where a prisma is being held in some kind of an ice shell. As Chris wonders about fighting with the Prisma, they realize that the town is under attack by some magicite beast causing Chris to chase them. 
At the town square, Chris meets up with Leon Alpha, and together they beat up many Magicite beats while displaying their powers and Raffinha also joins them. After that, one of the knights calls them out to warn them about Leon as she is the sister of the traitor Leon, the person who betrayed their nation. The berating comments on Leon make Raffinha angry as she asks them to leave, and they also end up meeting Raphael who is now a handsome boy. As soon as Raphael gazes upon Chris, he blushes, something is fishy. While his Hyrule menace, Ripple introduces herself to everyone. After that, at the dinner, Chris and Raffina share their encounter with the Blockchain Brigade, whereas Leon ends up discussing the reason the people hate her brother while Chris and Raffina console her. Leon ends up sharing that she is going to the capital to attend the academy but she reconsiders her choice as the town is getting attacked more often. However, the next day, Raphael informs them that they are taking the Prisma near the border while Ripple decides to have a chat with Chris. After watching the gigantic Prisma Ripples inform Chris that she was when the creature itself covered itself with a shell, even though now it will soon break out and can cause harm to the people around. After that, Chris and the others head towards the capital where Prince Wine delivers a welcoming speech while Principal Miliera begins students' orientation. Miliera forms a gravitational arena where the student has to escape the golems to have a ticket for a month of free meals. However, easily beats up the golem causing the principal to strike a deal with her while in exchange she doesn't throw the golem away, and Chris still ends up winning. At night, while complimenting the free meal they got from the cafeteria, they come across Lyslot who openly berates Leon. However, such rude comments make Raffinha angry so she takes Leon to their room where they decide to sleep on the same bed. Leon apologizes for being such a burden but Chris reassures her that she is not alone, and they are there to protect her. The next day, Chris and Raffinha enjoy their breakfast while Raddy and Pram have a love quarrel. The number of plates on Chris's table startles Raffi as he engages in conversation with his peer but Pram ends up getting jealous as Raddy takes special interest in Chris. After breakfast, the practical teacher starts the student's exercise for flying gears as he asks the students to race towards the docks. To challenge herself, Chris uses the same gravitational pull that Miliera used and runs like Usain Bolt. Raddy also tries to check up on Chris but ends up losing as Chris also surpasses the teacher's speed. At the dock, everyone gets inside their flying gear while Raddy manages to cross Chris's flying gear making her angry as she uses her power to display her supremacy, while Raddy gets a handful from Jealous Pram. As the day goes by, Miliera prepares yet another test for superior students in which Chris and others have to go through a labyrinth of trials where students' mental fortitude will also be tested. As Chris gets inside the labyrinth, she ends up meeting people from her previous life, one of them being Randall, who was Chris's heir to the throne. However, Chris decides to cheat her test as she launches her attack with hopes that it will distort the dimension but she ends up meeting Lyslot who compliments Chris while she also complains that Raffinha ignores her. Meanwhile, Leon faces her demon as she fights her family members to defeat her brother but Chris and Lyslot help her in defeating her nightmares. After that, Lyslot apologizes to Leon for her previous behavior and all manage to get out of the labyrinth with the help of Lyslot's gift of wings. As they all get out from the same door, Miliera questions her students' means but they all agree to hide the truth because they don't want to repeat their test. After getting out, Chris meets up with Raffina who completed her task without any help while Pram failed miserably. At night, Lyslot asks Leon to join her room, which makes Leon extremely nervous but Lyslot welcomes her with an open heart and all the girls enjoy their night while talking and eating. After a few days, the principal Miliera informs Chris and the others about a party where the new emissary will be appointed so they all are invited as Raphael wanted to see them. Leon feels hesitant to attend such an event but Lyslot and the others encourage her. After that, the girls head to the town for shopping where they meet up with Eris and Ripple who recently defeated some demi-beast. However, as Ripple feels sick, Eris mentions that they have been encountering such a beast for quite some time and Ripple always gets sick. But Ripple avoids her question as she hands Raffin her some gold coins that her brother sent. Some days later, all of the girls dress up while Chris also watches herself being pretty which her friends find surprising. In the carriage, Miliera reveals that she has seen the Highland when she was visiting there as an exchange student. Leon also dares and requests Miliera to ask for the news about Bloodchain Brigade which ends the conversation on an awkward note. Meanwhile, they reach the venue where they meet up with Raphael who immediately falls over his heel when he watches Chris in a dress. However, their cute moments are ruined as Chris's and Raffin his stomach growls. They all enter the banquet to enjoy their meal, but several demi-beasts attack the people and almost ruin Chris's food. 
Chris watches Raphael killing a demi-beast which makes her suggest that Raphael should have a test match with her. But Miliera intervenes as she suggests that Raphael should save Prince Wine and the emissary while the students will take care of the situation on the ground. Chris quickly kills almost all of the beasts while others watch her. After that, they are immediately called out by Lyslot who claims that Ripple's condition is worsening. After watching the situation, everyone realizes that Ripple summoned these creatures, although she doesn't have control over it. Prince Wine asks Theodore about his opinion who reveals that it might be the doing of Hierarchy Highlanders, a faction of Highlanders who resent the human population. The sudden realization makes everyone gloomy but Raffina cheers everyone by suggesting that they are there to protect everyone. Raffina's words also have a huge impact on Theodore as he tries to approach her but Chris, who thinks of herself as Raffina's father figure, stops him. After that Theodore reveals that he is Salen's brother but when Chris tries to hand Lin to Theodore she refuses. Nevertheless, as Ripple wakes up, Chris suggests that the Academy should take custody of Ripple while the principal and Theodore support her opinion but Raphael refuses as it can put the capital at risk. Nevertheless, Chris's opinion ends up getting priority as she wins the heart of everyone with her emotional speech. We all know she just wants to fight those demi-beasts. Back at the academy, as everyone struggles to run in their new practical, Chris yet again surprises everyone with her extraordinary skills. After that, some students from each class are selected with the duty to guard Ripple for a day, while one of the upperclassmen, Silva Iron tries his best to oversmart other people. However, Miliera tries to continue her explanation about the barriers. Silva yet again intervenes and asks Chris to leave the premises as she is just a squire. This statement makes another one of the students, named Yua leave but Miliera almost begs her to stay when it is revealed that Yua defeated Silva in a mock battle. Although Miliera tries to settle the situation, Ripple faints as a dark aura surrounds her while many demi-human breasts start to appear in the vicinity. Silva decides that as today is their duty to take care of the beast, others will not interfere in their battle but Chris ignores his statement as she ends up throwing around the beast. This also makes others join the fun while Yua also showcases her ability when Raffina scolds her. After some days, as Chris and her group guards Ripple, everyone shares the hilarious names that Yua gave them as she tends to forget them. However, it soon turns into a mock battle when Chris insists Ripple fight her, so they all gather at the principal's office to get Miliera's permission. Theodore hands over a greater artifact to Leon with the intention that Leon will be able to make a separate dimension where the school building will remain harmless. Leon slowly understands the mechanics of her new rune as she creates a dimension around them, while Ripple and Chris get into their position to join the fight. Miliera also creates a barrier so that their fight doesn't harm others around them. Ripple and Chris start their fight on equal ground, but soon the battle turns in Ripple's favor when she showcases her ability, but Chris easily manages to learn the way to counter her as she throws Ripple in the direction of Miliera. However, as Ripple hits Miliera, Theodore realizes that Ripple is absorbing mana from a special grade rune holder which makes them test out their theory even though their experiment proves fruitful as Ripple ends up in the same condition. Leon also loses control over her ability, and they all return to the real world where a huge demihuman appears right in front of them. As soon as Chris watches the creature, her eyes spark while she also warns Raffina about the potential dangers. After that, Chris charges at the beast head-on as she kicks the monster to a close-by field. Meanwhile, Yu also crosses the same field but she easily chops the creature without batting an eye and leaves. On the other hand, Chris and the others discuss Ripple's condition, while they also claim that the Highlander made her for the same purpose. However, Ripple soon wakes up as she tries to cheer up everybody, while Raphael and Eris visit the campus to inform Theodore that Prince Wine is waiting for him for an urgent meeting. After two weeks, while everyone enjoys their bath, Chris sulks, as she isn't getting any chance to fight powerful creatures. Meanwhile, Yu also joins them with her request in exchange for which she will fight Chris, but her wish turns out to be impossible which makes Chris give up for Dream for the time being. After the bath, Miliera calls Chris and Raffina to her office where she hands Raffina a new improved artifact that Theodore specially made for her. Miliera explains that her new artifact also can heal other people which makes Chris sulk as she doesn't like Theodore at all. However, their conversation is cut short when they hear a blast, making them run after it. As soon as they reach the spot, it is revealed that Ripple again had the same attack but Silva got heavily injured in his pursuit to save Ratty and Pram. Even though Silva tries to confide in their situation, his classmates bully the duo while Raffina decides to use her newfound gift to help Silva. As Raffina channels his powers into healing Silva, Chris also joins to help Raffina and they manage to close his wounds on time. 
The next day, as Chris and Raffina challenge themselves to eat a whole lot of spicy noodles, Ratty and Pram share their worries about Silva's situation. When Raffina jokes about Silva being interested in boys, however, Silva hears all of this but instead of getting angry he officially apologizes for his nasty behavior. After that, Chris and Raffina head towards the principal's office where they hear that the royal guard is asking that the school should head over Ripple to them as they will be getting another Hyrule menace in exchange for Ripple. Even though Ripple agrees to the situation, Miliera decides to follow her instinct as she refuses to hand over Ripple. Later in the night, while Leon and Lyslot are on their patrol, they come across Leon's tiger artifacts that take them to a secluded basement where they not only meet Leon but also the leader of the Bloodchain Brigade. However, instead of understanding the gravity of the situation, Leon attacks her brother while Lyslot is held captive by Sistia as they don't want to harm her at all. The masked man reveals his plan of attacking the new emissary at the ceremony that is going to be held in four days and also informs the girls that the royal family is considering giving their land to Almond to gain the favor of hierarchy highlanders. Although Leon and Lyslot don't believe their words, the masked man leaves with his comrades by claiming that they will do everything in their power to stop the highlanders. At the school, Leon and Lyslot inform everyone about the situation which makes Chris come out with a brilliant yet another reckless plan. It is revealed that Chris and Raffinha will attend the ceremony, while others will help Ripple to get over her condition by giving out their mana as much as possible so the Highlanders don't have a reason to take away Ripple. On the day of the ceremony, Chris and Raffinha shine in their maid outfits while Silva informs them about his reason for protecting Ripple who saved him when he was just a child. After that, they execute their plan as Chris and Raffinha attend the ceremony where they focus on munching more than serving other guests. After a while, the king introduces the new emissary named Level who turned out to be a cute kid. However, as soon as Level opens his mouth his cuteness fades away as his mouth only utters nonsense while the guest present only agrees to his disgraceful words. Soon after, some magicite beast attacks the ceremony while another one of the knights tries to attack the emissary, but Chris saves him. This gives the emissary the chance to further humiliate the nation while he also cuts off the king's arm claiming that their nation is inferior to them. Raffina and Chris quickly help the king while Level insists on getting another arm which makes Chris volunteer. Thinking that Chris is just a maid he agrees but no matter how many times he tries to strike Chris remains harmless. This agitates Level who asks Chris to hit him but the king stops her causing Level to reveal his true intentions. Level claims that they are thinking of wiping out their entire nation and they are not here to repair their relationship. Level further humiliates the king by revealing that he only attended this fake ceremony to lure out the Blood Chain Brigade and he has no intention to work with the humans. Such words make the king furious and he orders Chris to capture Level alive. Level surrounds himself with his deadly annihilator mana circle that can kill anyone who touches it. However, Chris suggests that he should concentrate on his magic on a single point as she wants to break it to test out her skills. Though reluctant at first, Level concentrates his magic at a point where Chris hits him with such power that he ends up flying away. After that, the king orders his knights to take care of the blockchain brigade in hopes that it will restore their relationship with the Highlanders, while Chris also takes Raffina to tackle the masked man. Raffina stays behind to tackle the Bloodchain Brigade ship while Chris manages to attack the masked man who turns out to be a formidable foe for Chris making her happy. Elsewhere, at the academy, Miliera and the others start their operation to save Ripple but Yua decides to leave after Miliera's heartfelt speech. I kinda like this girl's energy level. However, when Ripple insists Yua stay, she agrees on the condition that Ripple will introduce her to someone as cool as Silva. After that, they begin their operation as Leon opens her pocket dimension where everyone surrounds Ripple to tackle the monsters. At Chris's end, the masked man uses a condensed mana sword which makes Chris appreciate him for his skills but she still manages to overcome her shortcomings as she hits him. However, Level manages to get back in time to take on the masked man while Chris tries to reason with them but suggests that they can fight her. The masked man calls out Sistia who turns herself into a legendary weapon to help the masked man in his mission. At the school, while students fight countless demi-human beasts, they all reach their limit as Leon is unable to keep up the dimension to help them fight. However, to their surprise, Leon comes to their rescue with a mana replenished tonic which helps them feel light. Leon decides to explain himself by claiming that the masked man isn't a bad person as he was the one who suggested that Leon should help them. Even though Leon is reluctant at first, she still smiles as her big brother is there for her. Along with Miliera and Silva, Leon also feeds his mana to Ripple in hopes that it will end her suffering much earlier. 
but they're accumulated. Mana results in the production of a Prisma, a high-grade Magicite beast causing Chris to feel extremely happy. As the beast rages in the academy, Chris thinks about her dream of fighting a Prisma, but she feels reluctant to leave as she is in front of another enemy. However, Raffinha makes her realize their priority should be her friends at school while Level engages the Masked Man in a fight. Although, Level approaches the Masked Man with his Annihilator's Cage, the legendary weapon slices him into bits as he withers away in another dimension. Such a power display makes Chris surprised as she moves back with Raffinha. At the Academy, while the Beast rages, Miliera asks Yua to engage it in a fight so that the others can leave. But as Yua watches the huge beast, she just manages to run from it while it attacks. Leon also helps Yua in her attacks and she manages to land a punch on the magician but instead, she gets sucked into the demon's body making Miliera put a protective cage around her. As the beast wreaks havoc in the vicinity, Miliera asks the students to hide in the other dimension so that they can remain safe from the monster's attack. Elsewhere, the masked man and Sistia encourage Chris to help her peers while they claim that they are leaving the premises as they have got what they wanted. They also give Chris their flying gear making Raffina and Chris go rescue her friends. In the other dimension, Ripple wakes up and asks Leon to undo the barrier so that she can help Miliera and the others. Leon happily complies and she tackles the monster herself but as she is also drained from her mana, the beast easily defeats her. However, Silva asks Ripple to lend him her power as he wants to save everyone. Although Ripple refuses as such great power, can make a man senseless but her body, reacts to Silva's will and turns into a legendary weapon, which almost makes Silva irrational. After that, before Silva consumes himself in the immense power, Chris saves him and Ripple returns to her human form. Chris then tackles the huge beast who releases different beams into the sky, but Chris manages to cut them all with her super speed. Chris's fight with the Prisma comes to a standstill as she can also stop its attack and cannot go on the offensive. Seeing that Chris is in danger, her friends support her so that she can also save Yua and gives her a chance to launch her final attack. Chris's final attack manages to kill off the beast, and she also saves Yua in the aftermath. After the battle, Leon leaves them while his sister finally decides to forgive him. All the fight makes Raffina and Chris hungry but their dream of yummy food shatters as the school is in shambles. After a few days, while students work to rebuild their school building, Raffina and Chris are called out by the king where they also meet Ripple who shows her gratitude for helping Silva, otherwise Silva might have gone insane. After that, the king appreciates both Raffina and Chris for their bravery and even offers Chris the highest possible post that anyone can imagine, being the leader of the royal guard. However, Chris refuses the offer, but before they could leave, the king offers them extravagant food and as the days go by, Chris and the others enjoy their time with each other. That's all for today. If you enjoyed our video, do give us a like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content.